Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from GreenSock, and today I just want to talk to you about the new features in GSAP 1.19.0. The first feature I want to show you is how tweens can now accept function-based values. Here I have a very simple tween light to tween on three elements that have the class of box, and they're animating to an X of 300. So this is very typical. When I hit run, all three boxes will animate to an X of 300. Now suppose I wanted to randomize those values. I could do something like math.random times 300. And when I run this tween, you'll see that all three boxes go to the same random value. Every time I rerun this demo, a new random value will be set and applied to the end value for each box. However, what if you wanted each box to animate to its own random value? Well, we can do that now with function-based values. So I'm going to get rid of all this, and now I'll do this. We're going to define a function for the x value that returns whatever value that we want. When I hit run, you will see that each box animates to its own random position. This is really pretty cool. You have one single tween that has three unique values generated for all three of the targets. The really cool thing about this is that this function is also passed two values the index and the target, okay? The target is the element being tweened, and the index refers to the index of that element in the array of targets. So if we wanna do something like tween to increments of 100, we might do index times 100. I'm gonna hit run. And so you'll see that the first element goes nowhere because its index is zero. Zero times 100 is zero, and then we get 100 and 200. You might be asking, well, what's the target? Well, let's log it out. We'll see what we get. I'm going to do console.log target. Going to hit run, and we'll open up the code pen console, and there you see we have our three divs with the classes of green, orange, and gray. The modifiers plugin is really cool because it allows you to hijack and modify values while they are being animated. So let's just take, for instance, this little simple tween here where we have this arrow that's rotating 360 degrees. You might want to say, hey, you know what? Let's snap the values to only be 45 degree increments, okay? We don't want a smooth rotation. We want to snap to 45 degrees. Well, in that case, you may want to modify the values that the engine is generating. So I'm going to add on another property here called modifiers. And what we're going to do is create an object that has any number of functions that are going to change or modify any of the properties that are being tweened, okay? In this case, we, we're just animating the rotation. So I'm going to create a custom rotation function that is going to handle the rotation property or the rotation value before it's set. In this case, this function is going to be passed the current rotation value that the engine is generating. And I just want to show you that inside this function, I can log out what that rotation actually is. All right, so I put a few lines of code in here. I'll go over it one more time. We're rotating to a value of 360. I'm telling the modifiers plugin to apply this rotation modifier function that's going to, right now, log out the rotation. I'm going to hit run, and you'll notice two things. One, the arrow isn't spinning, but in the console, I'm logging out numbers between 0 and 360. So here, I'm showing you the value as the tween is running. Now, as soon as I put this rotation modifier in here, the engine is waiting on me to use this function to return a value that's going to be applied to the arrow's rotation. And I haven't done that yet, which is why the arrow isn't moving. So if I put in here return rotation, you're going to get the arrow actually spinning around again. But the purpose of this demo isn't to use that same rotation value. We want to change it in some way. So we can return any value that we want. I could do something really silly like math.random times, who knows, 700, something like that. And then when I hit run, even though we're animating to a value of 360, the arrow goes a zillion different ways. So let's go back to my example of snapping to 45 degree increments. Well, we can do that with a fairly simple calculation. 
I've created this degrees variable up top set to 45 and now I'm going to say return this little equation here that just takes the rotation and snaps it to that 45 degree increment. I'm going to run this demo again and now you'll see that the arrow snaps to those 45 degree increments. I'm still getting the rotation as normal in the log here but you'll see that visually we are modifying that value and only returning the 45 degree increment snap. Pretty cool. The modifiers plugin really helps when you're dealing with infinitely repeating and seamlessly looping carousels, all right? In this example here, I have 10 boxes in the DOM, and basically I'm gonna have them all animate from left to right in this sort of looping and seamlessly repeating fashion. So when the 10 moves off screen here, it's gonna shoot back over here and keep animating. All of these elements need to animate 500 pixels in total to get from where they're starting all the way through and back to where they are starting, okay? And let me go over to the JavaScript code right now. And we're going to handle this with just one tween max two tween, okay? We're going to tell every box that it's going to animate plus equals 500. So that's a relative syntax, meaning move 500 pixels from where you currently are. And basically what we're going to do is tell this five, hey, I want you to animate 500 pixels all the way to the right, but once you get past a value of 500, I want you to go back to zero and come in from the left. And that can all happen using the modifiers plugin. What we're going to do is hijack the X value and run a modulus operator on it so that we only get values between zero and 500. So we're gonna use the same syntax. We're gonna pass in the modifiers object that has modifier functions. For the x value, we're going to basically clamp it down between a number of 0 and 500. I'm going to hit run, and watch what we get. We have our seamlessly looping carousel, if you will. What's really happening? I'll show you. I'm going to click on Show Overflow, and watch that as numbers come off to the right, they automatically set themselves back to the left. What's happening is each number, once it gets past an x of 500, is having its x set back to 0, and it's coming in from the left. And so now with just this one tween on all 10 boxes, I have this seamlessly looping animation. So what I've shown only really scratches the surface. During development, our forums moderator Blake helped us a lot by creating a bunch of demos showing the true potential of modifiers plugin. Here we have a basic pixel snapping demo. Here, this animation is using the current X position of the ball to pass into a sine curve so that you have this bouncy motion along the line. Here, he's doing an additive blend where the purple box starts animating first and after a set amount of time, the orange box starts animating and then smoothly matches the speed of the purple box. So you can do these really cool type of follower effects, if you will. This is an awesome particle emitter where the modifiers plugin is using the X and Y modifiers to get these really nice explosions using canvas as you can probably tell. Really beautiful. Encourage you to play around with this one. And awesomer still is homing missiles. All right, As I move my mouse, modifier functions are updating the tweens on those missiles to nicely curve around and follow my mouse. Scroll to plugin now allows you to scroll directly to an element and optionally pass in an offset value. Let's take a look at the old way of using scroll to plugin. If we wanted to scroll to the element with an ID of section two, we would have to use jQuery or VanillaJS to actually find its top position and then pass that value into the scroll to plugin. So if I run this demo right here, you'll see the page loads and scrolls to section two. Not too bad. But with the new version in 1.19.0, we can get rid of all that code and just pass in the element that we want to scroll to. In this case, I'm just going to use the selector text of section two. We're gonna find the element with the ID of section two, and when I hit run, we're going to get the same behavior, but with a lot less code. You'll notice that section two comes right up to the top of the browser window here. If we want a little bit of breathing room, we're going to use another syntax, which allows us to pass in an object, which uses the Y value, same selector text, but we're gonna also have an offset Y property inside this object. So now I have 70 pixels of breathing room on the top. When I hit run, you'll see that we scroll to section two, but we have that 70 pixels right here. 
This can come in really handy if we had a top nav with a fixed position. I'm just going to jump over to a finished demo that looks like this. We'll scroll up a little bit, I'll hit run, and we have three buttons now. Section 2 takes me to section 2, section 3 to section 3, and back to section 1. We're using an offset value to take care of the fact that this nav here has some vertical space that it's eating up. The code for this is all very simple. Each button is just scrolling to the selector that we want, and they all have the same offset Y for the nav. Play around with the demo, have some fun with it, and if you really wanted to, you can get rid of all this code here and just use a little bit of jQuery if you wanted to. We're just looping through every button and we're dynamically generating the section names based on the index. So section one, section two, and section three. I'll hit run, and then I'll go to section two, section three, section one. All works really good. Split text now supports custom word delimiters. Well, what does this mean? Well, we had a person come to us who had a long hashtag that would have looked something like this. Split text usually knows where words start and end based on where spaces are in the text. But with a hashtag like this, there aren't any spaces. So we came up with a solution that would allow him to put any custom delimiter inside the text that split text would then recognize. So we would take the string that started like this and we would add these asterisks in between the words. Then in JavaScript what you can do when you create your new split text object you can pass in a word delimiter property specify that it's asterisk and then when I run this demo You'll see we start with those asterisks in there, and then I split the text into words. They go away, there's no spaces, and everything works perfectly. All right, so that's what's new in 1.19.0. We're excited about these new features. Please check them out, take them for a spin. If you have any questions, swing bar forms. We're happy to help. Happy tweening.